what's going on? This is the Club of the Man 1993 coming at you for yet the 11th Retro SummerSlam review of the SummerSlam Retro Review series. Now, we are on now SummerSlam 1998, which was a pretty good SummerSlam, I gotta give. There was only one match I remember where I'm like, what was this? But other than that, I thought this was a really great show. By far, the best SummerSlam so far. But I'm sure there's better ones yet to come, which I know for sure there is one. Especially SummerSlam 2013. Still my favorite. I can't wait to get to that one and watch that one again. It's like I keep saying that's the show that made me a wrestling fan. Um, so 1998 was where, you know, although SummerSlam was when, you know, Shawn Michaels um, was gone now. he was, This is the beginning of his, his four-year hiatus from WWE due to his back injury. Of course, we can't wait to get to SummerSlam 2002, where, you know, he'll, here, that's another SummerSlam that's up there as well. And the match with him in Triple H, definitely get to, the Summer, to that SummerSlam, which we're almost to that one. Um, but, um, so 1998 was, like, where things were starting to come full swing. You know, past couple years, The Undertaker started to become The Undertaker to who he is today. He was not so green in the ring anymore. He was starting to have better matches. He was, you know... Incredible. We have Kane around now. Mankind's getting up there. The Rock, Triple H, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course, is now the main event player that he was. I mean, he was, you know, starting those footsteps last year after he, you know, um, after his submission match with Bret Hart and his match with Owen Hart last year as well at SummerSlam 1997. So things were just falling into place. We're getting out of that stage where the WWE was in that big drought where the talent was very thin, and they were getting their butts kicked by WCW and ECW. Now they were the ones that were starting to become, you know, well, the WF, I mean, was starting to become the um, the ones that definitely overcome all that, all of them. And they were starting to be, you know, the biggest brand in um, sports entertainment, pretty much. Even though, you know, that power went to their heads as... Um, as you know, we all know, and now they're out of touch in the PG era. But we're not going to talk the well on that in this video. We're going to talk about this show again. I said it was actually a pretty good SummerSlam. So let's get right into it. This took place on August 30th, 1998 at Madison Square Garden in New York City, New York. We started off with a European Championship match. It was D'Lo Brown, the heel, taking on Val Venus. Val Venus is the babyface. D'Lo Brown was um, the heel champion. I guess the storyline going on here was... um was how D'Lo Brown, I guess, was claiming to use a chest protector um, because of a injury that, you know, he claims he had, but he was mainly trying to use it as a weapon, pretty much. So um, Val Venus knew that he had to play around with that, so he tried to adapt to that in this match. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, though, because um, the referee, I can't remember the referee's name in the match, um, tried to, you know, overcome it as well, stopping him from doing it from you know, using the chest protector as well, but then Venus got disqualified after he pushed uh, the referee to disqualify him. Venus did take out the referee, um, which it was weird because you know it, it did seem like you know, you know it was a babyface breaking the rules, but you know it was also you know you know the crowd wanted to see you know uh, Val Venus at least you know, overcome this whole chest protector storyline press also. But for the most part, the match they had with between him and D'Lo Brown was still a solid European Championship match, uh, in my opinion as well. You know, just two definitely the younger talents, um, you know, having a solid opening match for the most part of the offense they got in there. Um, wasn't anything too special, but again, I thought it was a solid opener, so, you know, good match. Uh, the storytelling there was, you know, the thing with the chest protector. Then the referee, though, a little strange, weird finish, but, you know, I still thought, you know, the match overall was still pretty solid. So we had that match start us off with. Um, of course, then we had had the worst match of the night. It was the, odds, the oddities, uh, Kurgan... Golga, Giant Silva with Luna Vachin, Violent J, and Shaggy to Dope versus Kayantai, uh, Take um, Mishinaku, uh, Dick Toga, Men's Teao, and Sho Funaki with Yamaguchi san. A bunch of names there. Just a big clusterfuck of a match, pretty much it was. It wasn't. It, it it really was not anything that great at all. It was meant to be some type of a comedy act, but, you know, it wasn't really that great. They're just a bunch of no-names, honestly, in my opinion. So we're going to skip over this match really big time. This is, was, that was definitely the lowest point of the match. And then after that, of course, we, we got this match. This was a good match, though, between two mid cars. It was the recent WWE Hall of Famer, uh, Jeff Jarrett, 
taking on uh, X-Pac from the Generation X with Howard Finkel in his corner. It was a haircut match. The loser of this match had to get their haircut. And for the most part, it was a pretty solid match. Of course, it showed you the fear to two of them getting their haircut cut in this match. They didn't want to get their hair cut short at all. Um, you know, the near falls and everything. You thought it was, it was a good match to get into for like a gimmick that, you know, felt useless in some ways. Because, you know, what was it really going to lead to? But it was just, you know, them x pac and his revenge on Jeff Jarrett pretty much wherever they were feuding over. Um, but eventually, um, X-Pac did get the victory. Now, afterwards, the new, which, the New Age Outlaws in this, um, at this SummerSlam was weird. Because, um, the Outlaws, um, were baby faces. I'm gonna explain more later. But they came out, and so did the, um, um, the Headbangers and Droz. They came out to keep Jeff Jarrett down, so that way he couldn't escape, try running away from getting his haircut. He screamed out, this is bullcrap, as they're holding him down. I think the, the goal was to shave him bald, but apparently something was wrong with the scissors or something like that, and um, because of that, you know, Jarrett was able to break free and, you know, not get, you know, completely shaved, but get his hair cut short for the most part, uh, pretty much though. But the match between, you know, him and, um, and, um, X-Pac was still, you know, a, a good match, I thought, for two mid cards putting on just a solid show that was, you know, the crowd was definitely into it. Um, so we had that match, that was good. Uh, then we had this mixed tag match. It was Sable teaming up with Edge, making his pay-per-view debut, taking on a team of Jacqueline and Mark Miro. I do believe Mark Miro and Sable were married for real, real life, like, or, or could make Hayfield, can't remember again, you know, I'm still, you know, they'll have all the pieces of the puzzle together. But this was a, a, a mixed tag match they had, and, I, and, I, and this match wasn't anything, you know, it wasn't, you know, like a five-star match or anything by far, but I thought this was a solid um, mixed tag match. It was a lot of fun. Edge really impressed me in this match with this being his first um, pay-per-view match uh, as well. Um, of course, you know, Sable was probably, was again, the most, one of the most popular things on the roster at the time also. Well, popular superstars, women's wrestlers, whatever you want to call it. Of course, we're not because Sables. Whew, you're a lucky man, Brock Lesnar. That's all I gotta say. Um, but um, you know, she got some tags and she hit her Karana on Mark Mirror. We did have a few moments where it was like you know the men and women collided as well in the match, too, which I thought I thought it was fun. It, it was not like one of those matches that's like okay, this is just this is just just filler. Why is this happening? No, nah, I thought it was entertaining. I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, eventually, though, um, Sable does pick up the pinfall victory for her and Edge to win the match. Um, so yeah, Sable and Edge win this match. And again, I thought it was a fun match to watch. This was also different too. We had a Lion's Den match between Ken Shamrock and um, Owen Hart. It took place in like, in like some type of like a theater, like inside Madison Square Garden. It didn't, didn't take place in the ring. It was supposed to be just a fight, a match that had a mix of like, you know, just Matt wrestling, you wrestling, and like you know MMA style fighting as well, pretty much. I did get to see the storyline of what Owen Hart and um, and Ken Shamrock was fighting over, but you know probably you know was you know more so fit Shamrock style also in there as well. I mean, I thought the match was definitely good, but that they had it wasn't you know a classic or anything. Not something like oh, this Lions Den match is going to be a match you're going to remember for the ages. But I thought it was definitely a good showing as well between Ken Shamrock and. Um, and Owen Hart, Shamrock does win by a submission. Sadly, though, this was the last SummerSlam for Owen Hart. As we all know, in um, in May of 1999, which is next year, of course, um, Owen Hart um, died um, after that accident with his entrance came to the ring. And um, I can't remember which which pay per view is going to be called, but the pay per view was canceled. Well, the the, the pay per view like you know concept itself was canceled after that instance this was the last match and owen definitely went out on a good note i thought again the lion's den match i, I enjoyed it. it was it was different and I, and I liked it It was a mix of like you know just you know professional sports entertainment and mma style like you know wrestling coming in together pretty much i thought it was, it was, it was cool so i enjoyed that um the lion's den match um now this is where they this match was weird so originally it was supposed to be mankind and kane the tag team champions taking on the team of New Age Outlaws, which they were both meant to be baby faces. Well, Kane was more so of a heel on the show, I felt. Um, so, um, 
so yeah, so mankind. I mean, Hank claimed he was not going to be there tonight, so mankind had to go at it alone. So at first he was resisting to do it, but he's like, you know what? Why can't I do it? So he definitely went out to do it. New Age Outlaws came out. The match was really short. You know, they, they, it looked they easily you know beat mankind. And afterwards, they pretty much again. With, this was weird. They're being baby faces. They said they thought mankind was a piece of trash, even though mankind was very popular at the time. This was not long after you know he fell through hell in a cell, uh, pretty much. He was just a guy who you know got beat up, but he was like a beloved superstar. You know, like you know when he got beat up, he did some like crazy crap that you know as we all know Mick Foley did. And, like you know we wouldn't believe they did that. Like, you know gave big reactions. So like that's what Vince McMahon said like he wanted to go for with mankind. And afterwards, you know, they get he gets tossed to a dumpster and then Kane's in there hit, hit, hit with a sledgehammer just to get this another moment. It eventually led to you know the storyline that's with, with Vince McMahon treating mankind like a son to him screwing him at, at Survivor Series nineteen ninety eight. This was also, you know, in like the early stages also of the Austin and McMahon feud as well. So that's where the seeds were starting to be planted there as well. And this view is going to get, you know, dragged on for a while, but you know, it was still, you know, one of the best views of all time. Can't take away from that. Definitely. But yeah, I just thought it was weird. You know, I mean, it was more of like, like a setup for what's come next. So for what it was, it was fine, but definitely a little bit strange. New Age Outlaws though become your new tag team champions after having the no holds barred false count anywhere match with just mankind. Um, and then we had this match though. The last two matches, you know, the past couple of Summer Slams, again, like, you know, the last match or two is what saved the show. Well, this show is already good. I you know, get into these last matches. But these last two matches were even better. They were they, then, like, you know, the last two Summer Slams, like, the last two matches. These were definitely, like, almost classics, but not, didn't quite hit in my level, in my honest opinion. Uh, because just some little nitpicks also in there. Uh, like this match of uh, The Rock. With Mark Henry taking on Triple H with uh, China for the WF Intercontinental Championship, and it was a ladder match. It was the third time in pay per view history that there had been a ladder match on a pay per view. The other two times were by um, um, Shawn Michaels and um, Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10 and at SummerSlam 1995. Um, this ladder match, I mean, despite the fact that you know there's a couple ladder climbs that were a little bit slow, uh, slow in there, in there as well. Like it didn't look, like, you know. It, it felt a little bit out of the element, which is why this match didn't quite hit being a classic. This was an A-level match, definitely, by far. Um, the Rock was the heel. Again, this was The Rock's first um, pay-per-view match, I believe. He was there for 1997, but he wasn't on, on the pay-per-view. That's when he was just, you know, Rocky Maivia. And, you know, he wasn't getting over... He was pretty much, you know, the Roman Reigns at the time. They turned him heel, though, finally. And he got over the crowd, became the big star he was. Triple H was, you know, the babyface. He teamed up with China. This was, again, you know, when, because last year, Triple H, well, I think it was still, I think he still got, was called Hunter Hearst Helmsley, I can't remember for sure, though, took on Mankind in that Steel Cage match, which, it was good, but it, I mean, it was okay for what it was, but it definitely was not one of the best matches they've had, but it was definitely the start of Triple H's and Mankind's rise to stardom, pretty much, if you know what I believe, and this here, like, it was, was Triple H really taking off, and then, like, you know, like, you know, the fine, the biggest piece of the puzzle for Triple H to become, like, a top guy, I still feel was when he turned on um on X Pac at the um, at WrestleMania 15 that European title match against um uh Shane McMahon to join the corporation and pretty much you know become like what he pretty much has been about for most of his career as a guy with all the power. But this match also was just one of our matches to you know to boost both the Rock and Triple H to become big stars. You know, it was it was just a physical match. You, you used the ladder very well. You know, Triple H also was had a knee injury also in this match also. I believe. So the Rock was targeting the knee. And then, uh, of course, you know, um, towards the end of the match, though, the Rock was about to retain the title. But China got in there. And um, she um, hit the Rock where it does not feel pretty good, let's be honest. And... Um, and because of that, um, he fell down, and Triple H was able to win the Intercontinental Championship. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it was it, it was just a great match game with two stars who were like just about to you know get into you know the level the, the meat of their careers pretty much. And this was just, this match that got the, the jump start even further um, their momentum as well. So Triple H won the Intercontinental Title again. This they would go on to you know um, um, well 
uh, The Rock would later win the title at Survivor Series and go on to face Stone Cold Steve Austin the first time they collided at WrestleMania 15. And then Triple H, you know, again with, with um, you know, he would face Kane at WrestleMania 15. Remember, it was a really bland match. But then later in the night, um, he would turn heel and join the corporation. Again, pretty much, you know, starting to you know the, the corporate power figure that Triple H was for most of the rest of his career. Um, so that's what we got there. And then this match also, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Undertaker for the WF Championship in a no disqualification match. The thing about this match is uh, you know, even Stone Cold Steve Austin admitted that it, he didn't think it was as good as it, he wanted it to be because he did get knocked out by The Undertaker during the match by accident, of course, which kind of, you know, took him out of his element a little bit. Um, but this match was still good. The dynamics, though, was a little bit weird because it felt like Taker should have been a heel and a lot of people say that Taker should have gone into this match as a plain heel because he did tell like, like Kane not to come ringside during his match. And he still tried to, but he waved off Kane. But after Undertaker lost to Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, down the line, he did turn heel um, with Kane and joined up with Kane to try to team up and take out Stone Cold and whatnot. Of course, y'all know, again, The Rock uh, won the title a Survivor Series 1998, as I said before. Um... And, uh, but the match, I thought, was still good. I heard about, of course, when Undertaker did that, that leg drop on the Stone Cold Steve Austin on the announce table. It was a no disqualification match also, by the way. But they somewhat missed the table. It was just a nasty-looking shot there that um, Taker got on Stone Cold Steve Austin. But, um, but yeah, it was also, like, there... It was both Austin and, and Taker's, like, first pay-per-view as, like, you know, true main event stars, honestly, also. And I get that, you know... Austin admit that he wasn't pleased with how, with the, the, that match, but I still for, thought for what it was, it was still you know a a good match. I mean, I think it was like an A minus level match. I would give it. Uh, but I definitely agree. It could have been a little bit better if Austin, you know, um, didn't get a little woozy during the match. But for what it was, it was still a pretty good match. And again, it, it wraps up the pay per view, which again I thought was a very good show. Again, and we had one match didn't really care about that big tag match where everybody goes earlier with all those no names uh but overall again this was still a good pay-per-view i give this pay-per-view a b plus a strong b plus i give this pay-per-view but i'm sure again you know there's a couple more that are definitely better than this show this is definitely the best one we saw so far SummerSlam 1998 so what would great would you give summer slam 1998 leave your thoughts down in the comment section below and as always sure to click my like and subscribe more content come to this channel follow me on twitter at demand air running three and i'll see you guys all later so until then guys have a great night. Peace out, everybody. See you all later.